For the first part of our pre-lab, the voltage divider is solved using the technique shown. For the second part, in the Arduino code, the string xy string line, we can see that the two parts of the strings are separated using a comma, whereas in the processing code, under the split tokens function, it is referred to as a tab. This indiscrepancy will cause the code to not be read correctly. Pay no attention to what I physically wrote for that one. For the final part, the ellipse code draws a circle with radius 5. That is because 10 is the height and 10 is the width. The Etch-a-Sketch with its two potentiometers is shown wired up on the left. The Arduino code is shown here. When you turn the potentiometers, they go from a minimum value of 0 to a maximum value of 1023. This is because the Arduino ADC is a 10-bit system. The processing code is shown next. We have an ellipse of 4.5 and, and the fill is blue. The size of this box is 512 by 512. The potentiometer values went up to 1,023, but in our x and y integer equations in the lines 24 and 25, we convert them so that they return a 512 value, simply by dividing it by 2 and making it at number an integer. In order to get the fill of the ellipse to vary with its location, I created integer values that are directly dependent on the x and y locations. Here I've created an instance where a value of time is plotted on the x-axis and one of the potentiometer values is plotted on the y-axis. This time value is in units of 50 milliseconds, and I achieved it by setting the delay in the Arduino code to 50. As you see, I turn one of the dials, I can vary the potentiometer value, which in turn varies the Y value in the plot. When I turn the other potentiometer, as both of them do, it also varies the colors so that they match the color requirements set forth in the previous step of the lab. As you can see, when the ellipse wave reaches the far right side of the screen, it resets back to zero. What I did was I created an integer known as time, that repeated itself for every loop of 50 milliseconds. When this repeating value sums to 512, the width of the screen, I forced it to be set back at zero, and I additionally cleared the plot. For the second part of this lab, our goal was to create a push button game pad. What I did, since I didn't have any buttons, was connect wires to ground and to power so that they would alternate between one and zero values and act as a button. As you can see in the image, this is set up on the right side of my breadboard. I created four button values, up, down, left, and right, as integers in the Arduino code. I connected them with a string and imported the string to processing. Within processing, I converted this string to an array and used if statements to determine if an integer's button status was high or low. Given the press of a button, the corresponding x or y value of the cursor would change and the gamepad could move the snake through the maze. I imported our maze image and set the background size to the size of the image. I then implemented maximum and minimum x and y values that corresponded to the size of the background. Within the button press if statements, I declared that if the x or y coordinate of the ellipse reached these maximum or minimum values, then it would go no further. I sketched the code with comments to better understand what is happening here. Additionally, you can see that my snake moves very slowly in the video. This was my first attempt, and I discovered that by changing the Arduino delay from 50 milliseconds to, say, 5 milliseconds, the snake would move much faster. Every time you see the snake start, stop, and change directions, I have physically moved one of the input wires between a ground and a voltage source. Ideally, we would do this with the push of a button. I will now speed up the remaining video of the snake solving the maze. Thank you for watching.